Good day, everyone, and welcome back to ASEAN News. United Kingdom ready to support Indonesia to overcome the Myanmar crisis. Foreign Secretary Rapp. Indonesia's foreign minister says, after talks with her visiting British counterpart, that the United Kingdom will support Southeast Asian countries in efforts to resolve the crisis in Myanmar. Indonesia is among several countries leading a push for high-level talks between leaders of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations on Myanmar, where nearly 600 people have been killed in a crackdown on demonstrations opposing a February 1st coup. Myanmar's former colonial ruler Britain has been among the most vocal critics of the military's overthrow of Aung San Suu Kyi's government. It is among several Western countries that have imposed or tightened sanctions on the Myanmar general and the military's network of business monopolies in response to the coup. During a joint briefing with Indonesian counterpart Retno Marsudi, British Foreign Secretary Dominic Raab reinstated British commitment to upholding international maritime law, echoing comment by the United States, Australia and European Union, which are concerned about Chinese military activities in the South China Sea, a vital country for global trade. Meanwhile, Vietnam, the Philippines, Taiwan, Malaysia, Brunei and China have been competing claims in the strategic waterway where China has been widely criticized for building defense facilities on an artificial island and deploying coast guards and hundreds of fishing boats in disputed waters. For global stability, uh, the respect and collaboration uh, of being one of your trusted friends in the future. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sammy. Rescue teams searching missing persons in landslide and volcanic rocks after tropical storms in Indonesia. Rescuers searchers for dozens of people missing in Lambata Island in East Nusa Tenggara province of Indonesia while expecting more casualty in the aftermath of a tropical island that has killed at least 128. Tropical cyclone Saroja brought strong winds and heavy rains that trigger flash floods and landslides on the island, home of the Mount Ilelewo Tolok volcano. A mature video obtained by Reuters show a landslide path leading to the ocean, felled trees and large rocks of cold lava that had crushed homes after being dislodged by the cyclone. The search of survivors continue with 72 people reports missing so far in the East Nusa Tenggara Island. Duterte is committing to resolve peacefully on a South China Sea dispute. Duterte's spokesman says the Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte is committing to peacefully resolving a diplomatic row with China over the disputed South China Sea in a measure to respond after days of strong rebukes by his ministers and generals. The continued presence inside the Philippines' exclusive economic zone of hundreds of Chinese vessels that it believes are manned by militias has frustrated Manila and drawn concerns from ally the United States, among others. We will continue to resolve the issues on Julian Felipe through diplomatic channels and through peaceful means. We will continue to resolve the issues on Julian Philippe through the diplomatic channels through peaceful meanings, said a statement from Duterte read by his spokesman, Harry Rocky. China has maintained that Whitsun Reef, known as Julian Philip Reef in the Philippines, was a traditional fishing ground where its vessels were seeking shelter from adverse weather. China's embassy in Manila did not immediately respond to a request for comment. At least 10 Thai ministers and dozens of members of parliament self-isolation after contact with positive coronavirus patients. <laughs> Ten of Thai cabinet ministers and dozens of lawmakers are self-isolating after coming into contact with positive coronavirus cases amid a sharp increase in the infections in the capital Bangkok. Prime Minister Prayut Chang Ocha changed a weekly get-together of his 36-member cabinet to a virtual meeting and urges ministers to avoid exposure to the virus. According to the health minister says, Thailand is aiming to start its mass immunization campaign from June and has been vaccinating health workers or people deemed vulnerable, more than 200,000 recipients so far. Meanwhile, authorities are also carrying out vaccinations among the public in Phuket, a holiday spot, as part of Thailand's calibrated reopening to foreign tourists. Authorities record 334 new coronavirus infections with no new deaths, bringing Thailand case total to 29,905 and 95 fatalities. Myanmar ambassador to United Kingdom locked from London embassy by military. 
Myanmar's ambassador to London tells Reuters he is locked out of the embassy and sources says his deputy had shut him out of the building and taken charge on behalf of the military. The military seized power in Myanmar in a coup in February have cracked down on pro-democracy protesters. London ambassador Kiao Zuarmin has broken ranks with the ruling junta in recent weeks, calling for the release of detained civilian leader Aung San Suu Kyi. Four diplomatic sources with knowledge of the matter says that Deputy Ambassador Chit Win has taken over his charged affairs. The military attaché had locked the ambassador out of the building. In addition, Kiao Zuarmin speaks to the next embassy where police are standing guard. He speaks to the protesters on the street outside. Last month, he called for the release of Aung San Suu Kyi and ousted President Win Mint, drawing praise for his courage from British Foreign Minister Dominic Raab. Britain has sanctioned members of Myanmar's military and some of its business interests in wake of the coup and has demanded the restoration of democracy. The British Foreign Office no immediate comment on the incident. Kiao Zormin tells the United Kingdom to reject the military envoy. Myanmar's ambassador to the United Kingdom, who has been locked out of his embassy by representatives of the military, urges the British government not to recognize the junta's envoy and to send them back to Myanmar. In a move that could have implications for Myanmar's diplomats across the world, the ambassador was locked out of his own embassy by his deputy at the behest of the Myanmar military, which seized power in February. The ambassador says through his spokesman who had read out his statement in English. Due to his announcement in March, the ambassador has been recalled by the Myanmar military regime. Since then, he stopped following instructions from Myanmar foreign ministry. We believe the UK government would not back those who are working for the military gender. In a letter to the British Foreign Ministry from the Myanmar Embassy seen by Reuters, those in control of the embassy says that the Deputy Ambassador Chit Win had taken over as charged affairs. Domestic media reports anti-coup demonstrators in Myanmar fought back with hunting rifles and firebombs against a crackdown by security forces in a town in northwest, but at least 11 of the protesters were killed. Indonesia and South Korea discussing bilateral relations there in the meeting. Indonesian Defense Minister Prabowo Subianto met South Korean counterpart Su Wok in Seoul to boost bilateral ties on defense and regional security. South Korea's Defense Ministry says a welcome ceremony of Prabowo is followed by a meeting where the two ministers vow to enhance cooperation in the defense industry, including on a joint project developing fighter jets. Seoul's Yonhap News Agency says Probo is expected to attend a ceremony showcasing a prototype of South Korea's first indigenous fighter jet. South Korea and Indonesia agreed in 2014 to jointly develop KF-10 in a project worth 7.5 trillion won or 6.33 billion US dollar, with Jakarta agreeing to pay 20% of the cost. El Salvador receives more than 100 Sinovac vaccines donated by China. El Salvador receives a batch of 150,000 Sinovac vaccine donations from China's government, bringing the country total to at least 1.25 million doses. The vaccine cargo arrives at the San Oscar Arnulfo Romero International Airport and receives by Health Minister Francisco Alavi and the Chinese ambassador in El Salvador, O Jian Hong. The donation will help El Salvador, a country of around 6.5 million people, which began its immunization campaign with the AstraZeneca vaccine. El Salvador has reported 64,491 cases of coronavirus and 2,030 deaths from the virus. Vietnam elects a former state security officer as the new prime minister of the country. Vietnam's National Assembly confirms Pam Minh Chin, a career security official, as the Southeast Asian country's next prime minister. 
Chin 62 is the sole nominee put forward by the ruling Communist Party for the post at the Congress earlier this year. He win 96.25% of the vote at Monday's National Assembly vote. He was formerly head of the party's Central Organization Commission, which has a long reach across the party ranks, as well as Deputy Minister of the Ministry of Public Security. The agency tasks with everyday policing, the monitoring of dissent and surveillance of activists as well as espionage overseas. Chin will replace former Prime Minister Nguyen Yong Shuang-puk, who was confirmed early on Monday as the country's new president, a largely ceremonial role. Trước Quốc hội và đồng bào cử tri cả nước, tôi, Chủ tịch nước Cộng hòa xã hội chủ nghĩa Việt Nam, xin tuyên thệ. Vietnam has no paramount ruler and is officially led by four pillars, such as powerful General Secretary of the Communist Party, the President, the Prime Minister and the Chair of the National Assembly, a largely Robert Stamp legislature. Papua New Guinea starts inoculations of COVID-19 after an increase of coronavirus in the country. Papua New Guinea Prime Minister James Marapi receives the first COVID-19 shot in the Pacific Island country under a small vaccination program aimed at curbing soaring infections. Australia sent Papua New Guinea 8,000 doses of AstraZeneca's COVID-19 vaccine after warning of a worsening humanitarian crisis. Fears of vaccine nationalism in countries producing shots have increased concerns about the need for the nations of about 10 million people, many of them living in impoverished, isolated communities, to receive vaccine supplies quickly. According to the figures released that Papua New Guinea, which was administered by Australia before gaining independence, has recorded more than 5,600 cases of the virus. The island's biggest hospital have reports that as many as 80% are coming back positive and Marapi says the virus has broken loose. And that's for today. Do not forget to wash your hands, use your mask and continue to maintain the social distancing rule. And see you.